Hello, Clash fans. Trample Damage coming at you today with the difficult question that we all face today, which is... What equipment is better for me to use than the others? And this is a tough question because there are so many variables. I actually love the math involved here between, well, am I going after walls? Am I going deeper into a compartment? Am I trying to snipe an, you know, an air sweeper from across the map? Am I trying to use hog riders with this attack? Am I trying to use... There are so many difficult questions to answer. We're going to start with the Barbarian King today, and we are going to take a look at all five of the Barbarian King's abilities, including the Giant Gauntlet, which is now available in the Cookie Rumble track if you wind up saving up 3,100 of those delicious drops of... Oh, no, wait. No, we're getting the Sweet Elixir to be able to get breadcrumbs? I forget what we're collecting. Cookie Metals! We're trying to get Cookie Metals. So with the Cookie Metals, you can unlock the Giant Gauntlet. The question is... Is it as good as it looks? And the question is a difficult one to really thoroughly answer, but we're going to take a stab at it and we're going to throw some analytics at you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take all 10 possible combinations of the hero abilities for the Barbarian King and set them through a couple of challenges at Town Hall 14. As an example, max hero abilities and equipment for Town Hall 14 to see in three different instances how the Barbarian King winds up holding up. The first example we're going to do is this bottom compartment here. We're going to put the Barbarian Puppet in the Rage Vial, and we're just going to send the Barbarian King into this corner compartment. It's a very common thing that people will end up doing with the Barbarian King trying to help funnel. We can see in this first version here, he winds up getting 8% of the base down before he winds up getting destroyed. Now we're going to try the Barbarian Puppet along with the Earthquake Boots. So the Earthquake Boots are going to be able to deal decent damage to the surrounding buildings, up to 50% damage to surrounding buildings, and he winds up going down at only 7% because he gets involved with the Barbarian King and doesn't have enough hit points to sustain the attack. Here we go with the Vamp Stash and the Barbarian Puppet, and again he winds up only getting 7%, failing to reach the Eagle Artillery before he encounters that enemy king. The Barbarian Puppet with the giant gauntlet, the cool new giant gauntlet. Clearly with this thing being massive, it's going to get him in here. And unfortunately, because he just takes so much damage, he doesn't get it done. Now the Rage Vial is actually surprisingly the one that in all four instances, we pair the Rage Vial, you already saw with the Barbarian Puppet, we got 8%. With the Earthquake Boots, we also ended up getting 8%. The Barbarian Vamp Stash with the Rage Vial, he does manage to pull off another 8%. That extra Rage damage that he winds up dealing there, just so powerful, he gets in on the Eagle Artillery and manages to take it down. I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch through these. We are going to put a chart up at the end of this so you can see what winds up happening. I think the thing that I really want to draw attention to here is the fact that in all these different iterations, clearly there are going to be things we can do with spell support and other troops that will marginally change the outcome of what's happening here. But for the most part, what I'm seeing is that Supercell has done an incredible job of balancing these abilities so that we don't have one that is substantially more powerful than the rest of them. And honestly, that impresses me pretty well because this is something that's very difficult for them to try to balance without one being overpowered. Again, we see here we're going in with a giant gauntlet, and it just feels like this thing is going to be so incredible, but again, we only get 7%. I love all of these abilities. I like that there are niche uses that we're going to find for each one of them. However, one of the things that we're going to see is they're all fairly similar by the time we take the pros and the cons of one versus the other, and we see that we land in a similar boat. Taking a look at our graphic here, we see if we were to just use this one example, we would say that the Rage Gem is the best one, followed by the Boots or the Vamp Stash, and then the Barbarian Puppet and the Giant Gauntlet coming in last place. Now again, there's going to be so much support you can give that will tweak and change the way this works, but generally speaking, they're all pretty close. Now we set up another scenario where we're going to have the Barbarian King dive in toward the Town Hall, and I will tell you, I was thinking about this and framing it up for a TikTok, which is why all the action is on the left-hand side, because I wanted you to be able to see the abilities the Barbarian King was rocking as he was moving his way in. So that first one there with the Barbarian Puppet and the Rage Vial, we did manage to get the Town Hall, and we fell at 7%. Most of these are going to come in at 6 or 7%. The Earthquake Boots and the Barbarian Puppet unfortunately failed to get the Town Hall down, leaving us only at 6%. 
that's actually going to be the name of the game with the barbarian puppet here because again there are so many variables there are giant bombs in near the town hall there are bomb towers near the town hall there are other things they're going to wind up distracting and that town hall makes short work of oh no there's no giant bombs on this one i move those out of the way but you'll often run into giant bombs where it could potentially wind up changing things. Now we come in with the giant gauntlet. And the giant gauntlet, it just takes so many hit points away. And when you've got three or four or five point defenses going after the Barbarian King, even with all the damage reduction that he's getting for the level 21 giant gauntlet, he just can't sustain all of that damage. Now you will notice... I did not equip a pet on here because the number of combinations that we have, like just the Barbarian King alone at Town Hall 14... He has four different pets he could choose from and 10 different ability combinations. So as we start working our way through here, what you'll see is the Barbarian Puppet abilities, only one of them managed to get the Town Hall down, and that was using the Rage Gem. The Rage Gem also managed to get down, manages to get down the Town Hall with every one of the combinations that we paired up with, with actually the Rage Gem and the Giant Gauntlet, this one here being the one that gets the most damage, where he does take out 9% of the base before he goes down. Obviously, we go to higher town halls when you've got eight or nine pets to combine with ten different hero abilities and different clan castle troops and spells and army combinations. There are so many different ways that you can see this shaping up. And when you have a very niche situation that you're going to be focusing on, of course, using the vamp stash, if he's going to be running around the outside, you want to keep him alive longer, good idea. If he's going to be going to a very densely packed compartment and you want to wind up using the earthquake boots and the giant gauntlet to help deal initial damage and then quick splash damage to take things down, it's it's going to be very helpful, but a lot of this is still going to wind up requiring some spell support. In the end, all the different combinations that we have here between the uh, all the different the five different combinations, they all land between six and nine percent. With six of the ten combinations popping off to give us a star, meaning we got the town hall, where the other four did not wind up giving us any stars. In this, uh, we're going to pop the chart up here in just a moment. We see this town hall go down to the giant barbarian king. We did wind up averaging a little bit better on the rage gem and the giant gauntlet relative to the rest of them, with the lower value ones coming from the barbarian puppet and the earthquake boots, with the rage gem actually having the town hall with all four combinations, followed by the vamp stash with two, then the gauntlet and the boots at two, with the barbarian puppet only getting one down. Now, the last example that we're going to wind up giving you here is, I think, going to be one of the most common things that we wind up seeing with the Barbarian King because so many people are either going to send him into the core, in which case, I'll be honest, in the core, in the midst of a whole bunch of other troops when he's just part of a big spam fest, the abilities, I am not noticing a big differential between them. When you wind up having him go on the outside of the base, the interesting thing is you've got these trade-offs between the extra hit points that you're getting for some of the abilities, like the Rage Vial or the Barbarian Puppet, versus like the Vamp Stash where you're not getting extra hit points, but you are recovering as you go. Or the Giant Gauntlet where you do not get extra hit points, but you do have damage reduction that you wind up facing. With this example here, actually, unfortunately for the Earthquake Boots, all the combinations with the Earthquake Boots met with less success just because of it blowing open the wall and pulling the Barbarian King inside the base where he winds up having more defenses targeting him and taking him out. The Barbarian Puppet in this example here on the outside of the base where he didn't run into any giant bombs, so of course I could stack this against him and make it bad for the Barbarian Puppet, but the Barbarian King with the Barbarian Puppet as a piece of equipment, when he's running along the outside, it does incredibly well for him because he's got all those extra hit points and the Barbarians help not only deal that extra damage because do not underestimate the impact of 40 Barbarians suddenly being in here. See, we see the poor Earthquake Boots pop the wall open, he goes inside, and we only get 9%. That was the lowest performing of the 10 combinations that you see here. Now we're going to go with the Rage Gem and the Vamp Stash. Not a bad combination, getting up to 15%. It is the second highest damage percent that is dealt. The Rage, we saw with the Barbarian Puppet, three of the four combinations ended up giving us 18%. Giant Gauntlet, you see how much closer, how sh how close he is to the start before he winds up running out of hit points, and yes, it definitely helps here. He's able to sustain by taking smaller points of damage from those defenses, but as soon as that Giant Gauntlet wears off, he winds up going down. Again, we have some trouble with the Earthquake Boots, this time paired up with the Vamp Stash. Vamp Stash helping keep him alive a little bit as he is powering through, but as soon as that Quake tr triggers, he does not have enough to keep pushing through. He's not recovering those hit points, and he winds up going down. 
Now on to the Giant Gauntlet along with the Earthquake Boots. This one here, we end up getting the lowest tied with the Earthquake Boots. So the Earthquake Boots had two nine percentages, this one and the, the one where it was paired up with the Rage Vial. And then the final one here, where we did get back to another 15% combination. This just shows you it's so difficult to try to balance the abilities, and I don't see a clear winner in any of this. Because if you try evaluating this in the midst of some kind of like spam fest melee, pushing all the troops in toward the core, figuring out the differentials and what makes the one Barbarian King set up better than another, it's so difficult to tell. As you can see here, you know, we did say, kind of, we'll call the Rage Vial the best of the first test, and then the Vamp Stash or the earthquake boots as number two on the town hall comparison we ended up saying the rage vial and the giant gauntlet wind up taking the prize with the vamp stash the earthquake boots and the barbarian puppet coming in below that with the rage vial of course getting the most on the town hall then in the final compartment where we're just sending the barbarian king along the outside the ra the barbarian puppet outperformed everything else followed by the vamp stash then the rage gem rage vial and giant gauntlet with the earthquake boots not necessarily serving him very well which makes sense because if he's on the outside the benefit that you're getting from all the extra damage on the Earthquake is limited one directionally. It's not like when he's in the core and he could be hitting a lot of things from a bunch of different directions. And so, you know, I, if we were to try and try average these things together, we would say that the Barbarian Puppet is the best, followed very closely by the Rage Vial and the Vamp Stash. But the truth is, at the end of the day, you're going to find your own niche that works for you, something that works better with your army composition. There are so many variables involved here. I'm having so much fun digging through the math behind all of this stuff. I look forward to talking about it on a future episode of my podcast, Inside Clash with Trample Damage. And if you are not currently checking that out, please do so. And of course, follow me on all of my other social media. I post most heavily on TikTok. I'm excited to be back here posting more heavily on YouTube. I'm going to keep bringing you a lot of great information on the hero equipment because it is, of course, the biggest and most important game-changing thing that we've seen here at the Town Hall 16 upgrade that not only affects Town Hall 16, but affects all of your minis and your clanmates and your friends and your families and your neighbors and your pets and everybody else who plays Clash of Clans. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure that you're subscribed, which if you're already still listening to this this far into the attack, I mean, the, the video, you're probably already subscribed. So I will simply say thank you so much for the support, and we'll check you guys out on the next video.